Going to a medical school that's pass or fail is great, isn't it? Or is it? Welcome to MedBreak, my name is Sam. It doesn't matter who I am because I'll just be talking about logic here. Don't we all hate grades? Going for that A is such a pain in the butt and for pre-meds, anything less than an A is considered subpar. It seems like more and more medical schools are starting to advertise themselves as being a pass-fail school. Pre-meds talk about it as if it's something that's desired. Medical students brag about this, that their school is pass or fail. In this video, I'll be talking about the pros and cons of the pass-fail grading system. I will later argue that all medical schools should be pass-fail during the pre-clinical years with a slight catch and that a medical school being a pass or fail should be the top three things that you should consider when you choose a medical school. Before we go on, please press the like button to help this channel grow. And if you like the contents of this channel after looking around, please consider subscribing. When medical schools say that they're pass or fail, what they mean is that there are no grades in the preclinical years, which could be anywhere from one to two years. No grades, that's awesome, right? So here's the problem. Not a lot of pre-meds know this, but medical schools are required to rank their students, regardless of what grading system they use. They're required to rank their students if they want the students to be able to apply to residency programs. In the Dean's Letter portion of the residency application, you are placed into a quartile. And obviously you wanna be in the top 25% if you can. If you aren't being graded in your preclinical years, then your rank will solely depend on your performance on your rotations, mainly your third year of medical school. This can be a good thing or bad thing depending on what kind of student you are. But every medical student will agree that your grades on your rotation is way less predictable and you have way less control over it than during your preclinical years. It can depend a lot on what kind of attendings you work with. I literally had an attending who gave honors like the top mark to everyone that he worked with because she was against the whole grading system. If you didn't have that doctor, then you didn't get an A, which kind of seems messed up. Also, all your off days will affect your grades even more because they will be more memorable to the doctors that you work with. And, you know, during rotations, it draws out the worst in you because the people that you're competing against are right there with you. In medical schools that grade during their preclinical years, it gives medical students a chance to raise their rank by doing well on exams. Also, why are medical students happy when they aren't being graded? It's because it removes them from the hyper-competitive cutthroat atmosphere where only a few percentage of students at the very top are given the highest mark. They basically don't have to study as hard to reach the highest thing achievable, which is just passing. But is not having medical students study as hard a good thing? They will be in charge of patients' lives after all when they become doctors. I went to medical school where the first two years was preclinical years. This is where you would listen to lectures, study off books, and learn from small groups. And this is where we did anatomy and dissections too. The first year was pass or fail, and then the second year was graded. I can tell you right now, I studied way harder in the second year because my goal went from just passing in the first year to getting every question right on exam during my second year. My next video will be on how I literally memorized everything, got 99% of questions right during medical school, and got all A's. Please watch for it next week. I know for a fact that medical students don't study as hard for tests that are pass or fail, seeing how they study for the different board tests. The USMLE Step 1 test is the most important score test when I went to medical school, and medical schools would give students dedicated 6 to 10 weeks so that they can study during that time and do really well. Students study every day, all day, basically. The other board tests, the score doesn't matter as much because it's pretty much pass or fail. Especially step three, where nobody cares about the score, so all the students want to do is just pass. The intensity and the time spent on studying went way down. Grades make medical students study harder to cram more information in their already overloaded brain, which isn't necessarily a bad thing considering they will be taking care of people. The bad part about being graded during the preclinical years of medical school is that doing well on tests does not necessarily mean that you'll become a good doctor. Course directors design tests to separate out students, usually by asking a few number of very tough esoteric questions. The few number of students who get those questions right will end up with the best grades. In terms of applying to residency, it seems like your grades during the preclinical years and what quartile that you actually end up on on the Dean's Letter does not matter that much. The grade that you get during rotations, the one that you have less control over anyway, seems to matter much more. The last bad thing about having grades I'll mention here is the stress it causes students. So there's a study 
that looked at around 2,000 students from 12 different medical schools. And they compared the stress levels of students who went to a school that had pass or fail versus people whose grades were divided into three or more tiers, like A, B, C, D would be four. Honors, high pass, pass, fail would be like a four. So anything that is two, which is pass or fail, and anything that is three or more. The students who are not on the pass fail system reported higher levels of stress, emotional exhaustion, feeling burnt out, and actually considered dropping out of med school more. This type of retrospective data has so many biases, but this is probably the best data that we'll get. Besides thinking like obviously, some other studies looked at whether having a pass fail grading system affects the student's performance academically, specifically the USMLE step one score and their clerkship grades. And they concluded that it doesn't. If I could rebut here quickly, I would say that the preclinical year exams, the USMLE step one and the clerkship grades assess very different things. So I don't think that step one and clerkship grades should be used as surrogates. But at least in terms of affecting the student's residency application, changing to a pass or fail system does not seem to affect the application strength. So here's my take from my experience. Having grades did motivate me to study more and doing well on exams did make me feel good, although it was more stressful. It served as another motivation for me to study harder besides learning the medical knowledge to help patient care down the road. I think all medical schools should change to the pass or fail grading system, but have a very high threshold for passing so that it pushes medical students to study effectively. They don't necessarily have to have an absolute cutoff for failing a student. They can go case by case and do remediations as they see fit. Maybe there's some administrative or accreditation stuff that prevents medicals from having such a laid back approach. But what I want to vouch for here is having a more supportive environment. This type of testing will allow course directors to make medically relevant questions on their exams and not have to rely on these very few esoteric questions to divide out their students. The ones who happen to know that random information would achieve a higher grade. If everyone learned great and gets above 95%, that's great. I think the difference in the stress level that students report from being in a graded system or a pass or fail system is enough to make it a top consideration when pre-meds choose their medical schools. The top ones currently are probably, you know, tuition slash scholarships, the prestige of the medical school, the location. And I would say being a pass or fail system, the first two years of medical school or however long the preclinical years are, should be among those. What do you think about making all medical schools pass or fail in the preclinical years? Be careful what you wish for because being graded during those times could be a good thing as it was for me. Please share in the comments below.